All right, here's a little tutorial on how to use Quartus. Now, the version I'm going to use here is version 10.0. That's the version we have in the lab. When the program first comes up, what I want you to do is use the new project wizard. There's two ways to do that. Uh, most of the things you do in Quartus, there'll be more than one way to do it. If you get this blue screen coming up in the middle, this one right here, what I want you to do is select New Project Wizard. Now this is a splash screen that you can disable right here if you want. And if you do that, then when you start the program, you'll be confronted with this. And then if you want to select the New Project menu here, it's under the File menu up here, and New Project Wizard. And this is what I would like you to do. Now, when you run that, you'll get the new project wizard, of course, start up. Uh, this is just an introductory page, so we're going to hit next. Now, here, I want you to create a directory for the program and give it a proper file name. We're going to put it in the Quartus directory that it's in, so I'm going to put a backslash, and then I'm going to call it lab2 if, of course, you're doing Lab 2. Now, the one thing you need to know right away about Quartus is that you may not use spaces in any of the file names. Whether it's for a file or a pin or anything, you cannot use spaces uh, in your file names. So this is going to be Lab 2, so I'm going to call the project Lab 2. Please give your files and projects meaningful names. It'll make things a lot simpler as you move through. So once you've created a new directory for this project and given it a name, we'll hit Next. If the directory doesn't exist, you'll get a message asking you if you want to create it. So of course you will say yes. Uh, page 2 of 5, we're not going to use for a little bit. This would be if you're bringing in files from previous project or so on. But for the first few projects, we're just going to hit Next here. Now something you will have to do in the lab um, probably every time, and if you have the software installed at home, you'll probably only have to do once, is to select the proper chip and chip family. The family that we use in our DE1 boards is Cyclone 2. So I would like you to select Cyclone 2. Now the chip number is actually written right on top of your chip. Um, and once you find that and read it, it should be this one, EP2C20. F484C7. So Cyclone 2, that's the proper chip. We can hit Next. Page 4, we're not going to do anything on. And page 5, we're just going to check to make sure our directory and file name is OK. Check to make sure that we have Cyclone 2 and the proper chip. And we'll hit Finish. Now, we're ready to draw our schematic. And to do that, we need a block diagram file. It will have an extension .bdf for block diagram file. And again, there's probably a couple of ways to do this. So if I use the new file icon on the toolbar, that will do it. And under the file menu, new. And doing either one of those things will bring up the new file window. And what we want is a block diagram or schematic file. So we're going to highlight that and hit OK. Now, another thing here is you'll see there's a default name, block1.bdf. I don't want to keep that name, so I'm going to go right away to Save As. And when you do that, because you've started a project the right way, it will suggest that you want to use lab2.bdf, which of course we want to do, so I'm going to hit Save. And now you'll notice that your block diagram file has the correct name. Now, when you want to enter components, uh, there's again two ways to do that. I'm going to start by double clicking anywhere in the screen. And you can hunt through this menu here and find what you want. And we're going to start with an input. If you know what you want, and most of the time uh, in this lab you will, you can just go to the name box and type it in. So I'm going to type input, and you'll see that as soon as I do, an input will pop into the window here. And if I hit OK, it'll follow my mouse around until I left click, and then it will drop it on the screen. So I'm going to double click again, 
and since I know I want an output, I'm just going to write, or type rather, output. Output pin will show up. I hit OK, and I'll drop it on the screen. Now the gates, you can do the same way. I'm going to double click here again. Uh, the gates will be, of course, in logic, and you can see many of them listed in here, all your options. Uh, to distinguish between gates of differing pins, uh, they put the number of pins behind the gate. So a two input AND gate would be AND2, uh, three input AND gate would be AND3. If I go to OR, this would be a six input OR gate if I have OR6. Uh, the gate I'm going to use for this tutorial is a NOT gate. And for that, of course, you just type NOT. And there you go. Now we're going to have to draw wires for this. Again, several ways to do this. You'll notice that if I put the mouse pointer very close to the gate here, my arrow turns into crosshairs. And then I can just left click and drag and go to the other gate and let go and you'll see that I have a wire connecting these two. If I want to do it a slightly different way, I can left click and select the output and then move it right at the gate, just touching it, let go, and then pull it away, and it will draw the wire automatically. Now, the first thing I want to do, and that I'm going to recommend you do, is not use the default pin names that you could see here, pin underscore name. Please don't leave those. If I want an input A, I double click on this, change the name to A and I want to make a lowercase y. I think if I just double click on this I can type the name without bringing up that box and there we go. So now we have our gate, we have our input, we have our output. The next thing we need to do is assign pins and again there's two ways to do that. You can bring up the pin planner but if you want to do that, you're going to have to name your pins uh, yourself. So you're going to have to click New Node and put in A and Y and so on. If you want that to be done automatically, although it involves another step, you can just go ahead and compile uh, your project right now. So I'm going to do that by clicking on the little play button, which is the compile. Uh, dialogue's coming up. If you haven't saved your changes, it's going to ask you if you want to do this, and you always want to save your changes. Then you'll see the compile process begin. You can keep track of it here. and There'll be some messages underneath, and when it's done, uh, usually in Quartus, there's going to be a few warnings. Uh, most of them you can safely ignore, uh, as you can with all of the ones here. So I'm going to click OK. Now you'll notice that the next time I go to the pin planner, which is right here, my nodes are now listed automatically and I can just go ahead and put in the pin numbers. Now if I go here and double click in the location window, I'll get a drop down menu and I just have to go and select the pins. I want L22 for the input, which you can get from your pinout sheet, and just select that, and then double click in the one below, and we're going to look for R20, which is right here, and there we go. Now this you don't have to save, as soon as the pins are assigned it's saved automatically, and you can see just above here that the pin numbers are already assigned on the diagram. So now to, to make those pin assignments take, we're going to recompile again. So this is the same process we did just a few minutes ago. And that was pretty quick. And we're done. All that's left now is to program it into your board. Now you're going to need to make sure that your board is hooked up to the computer using the USB cable. And then we're going to use the little programmer icon on the toolbar and click that and a window will come up. Uh, the first time you do it, it may say no hardware right here. Uh, if that's the case, hit hardware setup 
and use the drop down menu to select USB Blaster and hit close and there's the file we want and we're going to hit start and you'll be able to follow the progress right up here and as soon as it says 100 percent your board is now programmed and you can operate your switches and see the result of your circuit